Hey, it's Travis with T-Customs Productions, T-Customs.com. Today's video tutorial is how to save a slice sample that you've already chopped up for later use in Ableton Live 9. Now this is gonna be piggybacking on the how to sample in Ableton Live 9 tutorial series that I put out a few months ago. If you haven't referenced that, you can check that out. But this stemmed from a question that I received in the comments from DJ Step 1, and I just wanna read her question to you and then we'll get into the video. She says, this series was very helpful. Thanks for your knowledge about sampling in Ableton. I have a question. If you go through the process of chopping samples, what's the quickest way to save the slices as separate audio files in your sample library? I ask this because sometimes I want to slice up audio for later use, not for a track I'm working on at the moment. Also, even if I am working on a track, sometimes there are dope samples that don't make it into the song, but I want to save them for another project. Would love to know the most efficient way to export those chops as separate audio files. I wanna say thanks for that question. This is a good topic. This is actually a really simple solution. One way that you could kind of achieve this, right now I've got a sample that I chopped up in this drum rack and I've got about 49 slices. And let's say I wanted to only save a few of them. I didn't wanna save all of them, but just like a couple. One thing that you could do is just click in whatever specific MIDI notes that you wanted to record or play out and you could just export them. You could solo this track if you have other tracks going on. You just render those individual sample chops as audio that way, save them in a specific folder, and you could access them later. Select, let's say, this region. I'll make a little tail. I could then just export that audio and just save it into a miscellaneous sample folder. As you can see, I've got some various ones set up here. But what I wanna show you is a lot simpler way. So as you can see, I've already got this sample chopped. I've many times have been working on a session. I've chopped up the record. I know the, the sample's really dope that I definitely want to use it. And then I have maybe issues getting the drum track working right or finding the right drum samples. And so I'm spending all this time trying to force the track. That kind of ties back in with a video I shot on how to combat producer's block or beat block. Is that if you kind of feel stagnant and stuck not to try to force it, but maybe move on to a new session, you're working on something brand new, or put it away altogether. But what happens sometimes is you maybe chop this record up and you start a new session, you're working on something, you get a nice drum track, you said, hey, that sample I just chopped up would sound really dope over these drums, now my issue is I can't access it. And one other tip you could obviously do to save the sample chops and this drum rack and all the effects and everything is just save this as a new session, the only issue is that you can't access two sessions at the same time within Ableton. So if you're working on something new and you'd like to access those samples, you're probably Probably not going to be able to import those the way you would like unless you just follow this quick method and it's super easy to do all you're going to be doing is you're going to be saving this drum rack it's very simple i've got this sample chopped up and right here at this button you're going to see save preset it's kind of like what we did when we created the adg file for the slice preset the only thing with this is we're not going to be using it to slice the sample we're just going to be saving the all the sounds contained within this drum rack so we just click the save preset button here as you can see, it's gonna create a drum rack. It's gonna call it test. And you just wanna name it something that you're gonna be able to reference later. So if you're working on another session, you'll be like, okay, this was the sample that I chopped. So this is a, like a Japanese, I think, sample. So I'm just gonna say, you know, Japanese sample or Japanese chops or something like that. And so you just hit enter. It's literally that easy. And now if I start a brand new session altogether, all I need is an empty MIDI track like here, and I can now just drag this over and access all of the samples like before. And you'll see it also kept my transpose, my velocity, and any other settings that I had changed in here. It didn't, however, bring over my effects. You might have noticed in the last session, I had actually a filter and a delay, and that's because I was only saving the drum rack. Now, if you wanted to include and encompass all of your effects, delay, filter, any other effects you put, you can actually enclose everything into an instrument rack and save the instrument rack, and you can access it the same way that I'm showing you how to do this with the drum rack. Again, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with this, aside from just saving your samples, because you have 128 cells within a drum rack, you can create custom drum kits, percussion kits. I've also used this technique in the past to load in a bunch of like miscellaneous sample chops that I've just pulled from random records. Feel free to get in here and experiment. Let me know in the comments what you guys come up with, how you're able to use this same technique. Hopefully this was helpful, DJ Step 1. Hopefully this answers your question. If you guys have any other questions for me related to sampling or Ableton Live, video tutorials, production tips, 
please let me know. You can also check out the blog, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll also make sure to link those related Ableton Live tutorial videos in the description as well. I want to say thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.